How's it going everyone? Today I'll be going over how to draw the chest for female anime characters. So the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to cover the anatomy and then right afterwards I'm going to start drawing so that way you'll know how to apply the anatomy to your actual drawing. Now the chest area consists of the rib cage, which we can see partially right there. Then we have the collarbones at the top here, the pectoralis major right there, and then the pectoralis minor sits underneath it, but Usually it's not visible, so we're not going to worry about that. And then lastly, we also have the breast tissue, which would be somewhere around there. First, we're going to take a look at the rib cage. Oh, and uh, by the way, if you're going to study anatomy, I highly recommend you study the bones instead of the muscles, because if the skeletal structure that you've drawn is wrong, all the muscles are going to be drawn incorrectly as well. And then conversely, if the skeletal structure is drawn correctly, the muscles are going to be drawn correctly as well because it's basically just a connect the dots puzzle. Anyway, the rib cage, it has a lot of information, but we're going to simplify basically all of this. So the only things we really need to pay attention to are this egg-like shape. The bottom of it is flat and then the top is the least wide part. The widest part of the rib cage is around halfway down. For simplicity's sake, we'll say it's halfway. And then slightly below that halfway mark, we have this opening. This thing here is called the sternum and it's what the chest muscle is attached to, but it's basically just a center line that goes through it. So uh, that's how we're going to draw it. Then here's also a three quarter view. It has that same egg shape with the widest part being about halfway down. And then one more thing to pay attention to is that the sternum is actually not going straight down. It's at a slight angle like that. And then from here it goes back down. If we want to draw this opening, we do it like that, and then it goes in like that. And then we have a simplified rib cage. One very important thing I need to point out though, is that these ribs can't move. So for the purposes of drawing, you can ignore all of these gaps and instead think of the rib cage like it's just one solid block of bone. And the reason why I point this out is because we know that in perspective, if you draw a box, all of these parallel lines on the box are all going to be pointing towards the same vanishing points. So if the rib cage is just one solid block of bones, that means that it follows the same rules as the box. So for example, if we have a rib cage like this, all of these lines are going to be going towards the same vanishing points. And this means that if the rib cage gets tilted in any way, every single piece of the rib cage has to follow that same tilt. Now we can finally get into the drawing. I'm going to do three views for this video. We have basically a front view and then we'll have one from below. I'm just drawing the egg shapes that we uh, looked at previously and then I'll do one from above as well. So um, very similar shapes for all of them. Now first for our front view, all of our perspective lines are going to be facing that way. We know the widest point is around halfway and then we saw that the opening was slightly below that. So it's going to be right around there. And then from here, we draw the sternum down to it. We draw that opening, goes back in like that. Also, one thing I didn't point out is that right here at the top, there's an opening for the rib cage as well. We have the spine here in the back and then the sternum in the front. And as you can see, this part in the back is higher than the sternum in the front. So there's this diagonal angle to it. So then all we have to do is draw that as well. And then we have our rib cage from eye level. Now for the low angle, the first thing we're going to do is decide our perspective. That's always something that you should do to start with. Then I'm going to draw that sternum. And because this is a low angle, the opening is going to be a lot higher than it was in that front view. So instead of it being lower than half, it's probably going to be at around that halfway mark. So then we do that and then we draw our opening going like that and like that. Make sure that these two points are lined up according to perspective. And then that's basically it. From here, you probably wouldn't be able to see the opening 
because it's uh, hidden behind the rest of the ribcage. So it looks something like that. And then our high angle, I want this one to be a bit more from the side. And because we're looking at it from above, we're going to see more of that top plane of the ribcage. And then that opening at the bottom is going to be a lot smaller. Draw the sternum and then it's probably going to go down until all the way there. And then from here, we can draw the rest of the rib cage. Next up, we're going to draw the collarbones, which are right up here, right above the first rib of the rib cage. And these things help the shoulder move. So whenever you move the shoulder up, the collarbones move up as well. And they're right underneath the skin, so you can feel them and you can see them as well, making them a really good landmark for our chest drawing. Also, looking at them from above, they have this kind of curved shape to them which is really good for us because it serves as kind of a contour curve. If you've ever tried drawing stockings, you'll notice that if you draw them this way, it makes the leg appear like it's coming towards us. And if you draw them going this way, the leg is going away from us. And the collarbones function the same way. If we're seeing the collarbones like this, it means we're looking down on them. And if we see them like this, it means we're looking up at them. Now to draw the collarbones, it's actually a pretty simple shape. Something like that is good enough. And they actually have a similar width to the actual rib cage. So if you just measure it out like that, that should give you the correct width. Now for our low angle, they have this curved shape to them, like I said, which will make it easier for us to show that we're seeing them from below. And then for the high angle, the same thing. And uh, also make sure that these things follow the same perspective lines. Now that we're done with the bones, we can move on to the muscle. And our first and only muscle actually is the pectoralis major, which is this fan-like muscle that you can see here. It originates from the collarbone, as you can see here, the sternum right there, and then partially from the abs as well on this bottom part. For simplicity's sake, you can also say that it ends right here at the bottom of the sternum. All three of these sections then converge to the arm right here at this spot. And uh, I don't really want to get into arm anatomy right now because that would make this video a lot more complicated. So you can just draw the arms as simple cylinders, which is uh, what I'm assuming you're already doing, and then keep the shoulders as a sphere like that. Also, the arms sit further back in space than the front of the ribcage, so the pectoralis actually has to wrap backwards to it like that. This means that on the far side of the ribcage, you can only see a very small part of the pectoralis, which on the close side, if I show it, would probably be this area right here. And then all of the stuff on this side gets hidden. And one last thing I should point out about the pectoralis, right here we have the shoulders and then the arm, like I said, we're drawing that as a cylinder. The pectoralis overlaps the arm in this area right here. So if we show that with line work, it looks like this. So the first thing we should probably do now is add the arms as well as the shoulders. The arms I'm just going to keep as simple lines like this. And uh, we're not doing anything complicated with the arm. They're just going to be resting towards the sides. Then to draw the pectoralis, first I recommend deciding where you're going to place them on the collarbones. They're slightly less than halfway through the collarbones. So then from here, we can just roughly draw these shapes. Later on, we're going to draw over them so they don't have to be too complicated. Then for a low angle, we're going to go from the bottom of the sternum up to there. And uh, also because these are female characters, you can keep these muscles very thin. If we were drawing male characters, you could have given them some more volume. Then for our high angle, it'd be somewhere around there. And then you can actually use these perspective lines to line them up as well if you want. So then we just draw them like that. And that means we're done with the muscles. And then lastly, we have the breast. So the breast tissue originates on the pectoralis major and it actually follows it all the way into the armpit. From here, they follow it in there, which means whenever the character moves their arms up, the breasts follow the arm. Also, they're affected by gravity, so even though they originate from the pectoralis major right there, they drop slightly below it. Something like that, and then the size, of course, affects how far they actually drop. So to start with, we're going to draw that two-dimensional base first. 
just so that we can actually get the position correct. Make sure you draw them going into the armpits like that. Now we've got the low angle. Drawing them from below is actually a lot harder than drawing them from every other angle, I think. Now, just rough them out like that. And then from here, we're basically done. Lastly, we just need to add the volume on top. I need to be kind of careful with this because I don't want to get this video age restricted. Here at the bottom, you can use a, uh, a line going towards the vanishing point to make sure that they actually have the same length. Alright, here's what we got now. I'm quickly going to clean up the rest of these drawings and then I'll check back in a second. Alright, and here's what we got. Now, of course, to do something like this, it's not just chest knowledge. You also need to know stuff about the neck, the shoulders, the arms, the back. So uh, I'll be putting up some more videos in the future covering the anatomy for those things. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like the video, leave a comment or, or whatever uh, YouTubers say nowadays. And I guess I will catch you all next time.